What's up guys, Stephen Bogland here, Pro Physique, and today I want to talk about lactic acid. <clears throat> so alright guys, I know that there is a lot of information out there and one of the things that I remember being told on a regular basis uh, was about lactic acid, right? And so I think there's a lot of misconceptions with lactic acid, uh, what it does physiologically, how it's made, um, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think that a lot of us just know lactic acid as kind of that thing that builds up, right? And then we can't do any more work in the gym. <clears throat> and so let's be very honest. Uh, lactic acid or lactate is very much part <clears throat> of the fatigue complex, right? So fatigue is this big overriding thing, right? And there's a lot of thoughts behind fatigue, but we know that there are a lot of things that go on with it. So um, lactic acid and lactate levels increasing <clears throat> is an indicator that fatigue is rising but there are also a lot of other mechanisms along with it um, that aren't necessarily super well understood. So fatigue in general is a very complex uh, idea that we really don't get that well. And there's a lot of thought processes and ideas behind it, but essentially everything in the world affects fatigue. Um, there are some people that will even go as far to tell you that the reason you fatigued and lost is because you decided mentally that you were going to fatigue and lose beforehand. So <clears throat> understand that fatigue is very misunderstood and there's still a lot of unknowns and uh, fatigue science isn't an exact science yet. But we do understand what lactate is. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to throw a little picture of glycolysis over somewhere. Um, just so you have an idea of a, a visual representation of the process. And so why does glycolysis matter? So glycolysis is how our body uh, makes carbs or glucose into energy, right? And so it's going to go through this process, starting with glucose, it's going to come out with one of two different things. And depending on which one of these two different uh, <clears throat> end products we have, that's going to determine whether it was an aerobic process or whether it was an anaerobic process. And that's going to tell us whether or not we are making lactate or lactic acid. So anaerobic means very short term, quick energy um, without oxygen, right? And so essentially what happens is when we have anaerobic glycolysis, we go through these steps, but the NADH and don't have any place to take those electrons from the process. So what they do is they take them and they give them to pyruvate. Now when you put those extra electrons on pyruvate, it turns into lactate, right? So if there's enough oxygen available in the system, if the electron transport chain is open to receive electrons and there's enough NAD there to get all the electrons to where they need to go, then we won't have that <clears throat> lactate come up, we will continue to see pyruvate as our end product, right? All right, guys, so essentially this is glycolysis. So it's glycolysis on paper. Um, if you want, you can really just pause and check it out a little bit more in depth. But what you're going to see is this is what's happening on a cellular level. So glucose is being changed by different enzymes. So each enzyme and in intermediary has its own thing going on. Uh, ATP is going to have to come in and be used to break it down at one point, and ATP is going to be produced simply from glycolysis itself at certain points in the process. Now, what you're looking for here is the bottom, and that is pyruvate. So pyruvate, if we have enough room, is what we're going to talk about in a little bit here, where, uh, the electrons will be transferred to that molecule and then made, well, or changed into lactate. 
better known as lactic acid or referred to as lactic acid by many of the gym bros. Pyruvate then goes into other energy systems and continues to produce ATP or energy, right? So some is made in glycolysis and anaerobically we will use that for short-term energy, um, but that only lasts so long. So why are you still sore? Okay, let's talk about this. Because lactate actually gets cleared out reasonably quickly. So if you're still sore two to three to four days later, four days is a lot, um, then it can't be lactate because what happens with that lactate, right? Is so lactate is not a bad thing per se. Remember, it's, it's energy, it's pyruvate with an extra electron. So what we have to do is take that extra electron off and then put it back in pyruvate and it's energy. So our body, our muscles themselves can do this. And the other thing that we'll see is they will actually shuttle that lactate out of the muscle. And what will happen is our body will take that lactate, get rid of the extra electrons, change it back into pyruvate, and then it's good for energy again, right? So that's why when they're testing fatigue, they test blood lactate levels, right? So lactate's not necessarily a bad thing. It's still usable, valid energy. The reason that we are still sore is because we've actually created micro tears in our muscles, right? So that's telling us there has been muscle damage there. That's why we're sore. That's why we have that feeling. Um, but it's not lactate, right? Um, so really, I just want you guys to understand what lactate really is today. Today it's kind of like a little bit of a science of Steve lesson. Um, so it's something that I thought would be a good thing to really help facilitate for you to learn. Um, I wanted to have a lactate. Let me get a picture of lactate over here. But I think I'm going to put that in the thumbnail or something instead um, because I like making dumb jokes. But anyways, guys, that's it. Very simple lesson, something that's kind of a little bit more in depth, you know, explained. And as you can see, if you can't see, it's time to go. So we will talk to you later, guys. Bye.